Hi, this is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at BergzergArcade.com and this is tutorial 243, uh, part R, and we're going to be working on our mob uh, spawning script. So let's go ahead and op open up Unity. And the last one, we went ahead and created our little skeleton mob, and by all means, go ahead and create more. Uh, for now, I'm just creating the one. And yeah, okay, I just wanted to make sure I didn't have my spawn point in that folder. But anyway, I've already created a prefab for this in our other scene. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and recreate this one. Uh, you just simply make an empty game object. Uh, call it what you want. I don't believe it actually matters about the name. Uh, but I'm going to call mine Mob Generator. And this script we actually wrote quite a long time ago before we started getting into things like singletons and uh, anything static. Uh, so there's obviously going to be some updates that we'll want to do to this script. Uh, but for now, it just works fine. Let's just keep with uh, the mantra that we've been using. I'll get it working right the first time, and then we can come through and re-optimize later. Uh, so the script was actually called something about a mob. Here we go, mob generator. Uh, drag that on and open it up and you'll notice that we have mob prefabs these are the mobs that you actually want to spawn in your in your uh, uh, for your spawn points so I'm gonna go ahead and clear this I'm gonna come down to my skeleton uh, before I do that actually we have to come over here and increase the size uh, there's only one mob I want to spawn that's my skeleton so I'm gonna come up drag that in and then my spawn points I've gone ahead and actually created three spawn points and I guess it was around February we were talking about this and I had another system uh, where we created basically different zones and you could have different mobs spawn for different zones and you could actually have like multiple mobs per spawn point and stuff like that. Uh, it got a lot more complex than what we're working on now. So I'm going to stick to this very simple one because, you know, really we're just trying to get things working. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, the best scenario possible. It just has to be one that works. Something to start with. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and add my three spawn points here. Uh, no particular order. And I'm just going to save that. And I'm just going to hit play. And pause. Uh, we have no errors. We do still have the uh, warnings. And that's because we actually... We actually have two warnings. One was for the camera. We're always going to get that one there because when the camera... It has the potential to spawn in, in the game before the player. And to be honest, the way we have it set up right now, we don't even have the camera spawning. It just, it, it's automatically there by default. So basically the first frame that it goes through, it takes a look for the uh, player. Can't find them and it just ignores, you know, everything else that it's supposed to do. And it waits till it finds the, the player. But anyway, that's always going to be there just for the way we have it set up. And that's the behavior we're actually trying to get. Uh, but this one here, we still forgot to actually add the text mesh to our mob so that we can have the name displayed above the mob when they're targeted. Uh, but we'll get to that. Let's just actually go ahead and take a look at our spawn points. So we'll notice here we have this little drop down now. So that means that something actually did spawn underneath each spawn point. And if we open each one up, we'll notice it just, you know, a skeleton spawned in each one. And that's because that's the only thing we have. Now, if we have more than one, uh, it just randomly picks. Uh, but let's go ahead and actually take a look. The, uh, it doesn't look like It uh, saved off just right. Uh, if we look at the skeleton here, he's not inside of his. Okay, I'm actually lo I'm looking at one and clicking on another. So let's actually uh, look at the one. It doesn't seem to be adjusting his uh, character controller, and it's because I actually I think screwed the character controller up. So let me just stop that, and I'm gonna come in. Height was supposed to be two. And center is supposed to be one. I think I just actually saved those values off wrong last time. Uh, let's start it back up. I'm just going to jump right back in. Here we go. And let's just grab one of these guys. We'll have everyone take a look. And that's pretty much what I wanted. Uh, his animation's all twitchy, but that's fine. Uh, like I said, we're going to be redoing a lot of these uh, scripts. And I don't remember which one we gave him. I think we gave him the walk one, yeah. Uh, but we're going to be doing a lot of these scripts, so that stuff we'll be fixing then. Uh, if you really want to get it working smoothly with what we already have, go back and watch the uh, other Mob AI tutorials, and we should have covered it then. Actually, that's because of a fix I actually put in my uh, advanced 
movement script. Let me just go take a look at this. Um, I was making an adjustment for someone and I believe I actually just screwed it up. Uh, so we actually want to look at where we're setting up the idle animation. And I was showing someone on the live feed on how to do something and it's right here. Let's go ahead and comment this line out and start it back up. I think our mobs should be okay. That'll actually take care of the twitching on our player as well. But it means that we're going to end up with our leg in the air because until we end up fixing things. But anyway, that doesn't matter. What we actually wanted to look at was these mobs, the skeletons. So I'm going to come back into my scene view. We should have a skeleton. And there we go. He's no longer twitching on us. Uh, but anyway, I do not want to introduce new code just yet. So that's everything except for the name. And let's go ahead and add that now. So I'm going to take my skeleton. I'll just drop him in on a spawn point. So yes, I'm losing a prefab. And I just want to actually add a name. Now, if we actually open up his script, uh, which I believe is probably underneath mob. Let's go take a look here. This is probably where it's getting the name. Uh, so we're looking for a transform display name. And it's going to find a child called name. Okay, so we're, that means we have to come up here and make an empty. I'm going to name this name. Uh, drop it onto my skeleton. The uh, base from the skeleton. Make sure it's not the prefab. Uh, you want to do it under the base of the skeleton itself. Uh, reset it. And I'm sorry, we did not want to drop an empty. Well, you could, and you could build it up from there. But what you actually want to do is, there's already one made, uh, 3D text. We'll just put that in. And that's what we want to drop on our skeleton. Now, uh, we did go over how to change the font, and I think I mentioned how to make sure that it always rotates the, the face the the camera in a previous tutorial if not I don't think we actually have the code in for it so it is code that we do have to add uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just reset this let's go look at our character or our mob and I'm gonna to want to change a few of the settings here uh, anchor I'm gonna do lower center there we go. And I'm just going to start off. Uh, where's this? That's the front. Okay. So I'm not really worried about which way it's facing right now because we are going to be adding a script that actually makes it rotate to face the camera at all times. But I do want to raise it up above his head. And let's shrink the size just a bit. Uh, I'm not sure if this font actually allows you to resize. Uh, we might actually have to, let me just see here, no, apparently not. But anyway, that's how you get the font there. Uh, maybe here. There we go. I was just adjusting the wrong thing. So there we go. We have it uh, above his head. I probably want a little bit higher. So I'm going to go ahead and move that just a bit more. Uh, I'm going to take my skeleton, reapply it, delete it, start the game back up, and we should actually get the uh, spawn points above, or the skeleton's name above their head. Now it might be turned off by default until we target them. And we're going to be redoing all the targeting stuff, so I'm not going to cover that just yet. Uh, we do have an error. Uh, here's the name. And it's not displaying. Let, let's take a look and see what this error is. Okay, I'm not really sure what that's all about. Let's start it back up, see if we get it again. Uh, we did not get it this time. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at a mob. Uh, the same one. Mm, 
who's twitching again? Oh, that's because I've gone ahead and rolled back the code. And he should have his name. It is not displaying, so let's go ahead and stop this. And let's take a look at the prefab again. So let's go ahead and just take the skeleton prefab and drop it onto the scene. And let's go ahead and select him and move in. Uh, before we do that, I'm just going to re reconnect my spawn point there. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in here. And the name is displaying. Uh, let me just look at that code one more time. Um, let's see, not advanced movement, it's under the mob. So we're grabbing, we're creating a display, we're calling it, we're finding child name. Uh, we're turning off its mesh renderer. There we go. I think that's probably why we're not actually seeing it. Uh, let me go ahead and actually run this again, just take another look. And we'll just start it back up, jump over to a mob. All the fun parts of figuring things out. And we'll shrink the animation up. Actually, we'll just jump straight into the name. And if we take a look here, the mesh renderer is off. And if we turn it on, there we go. So yes, it was spawning right. Uh, by default, we have it actually turned off. And through our targeting script, when we actually target the mob, that actually turns it on so we know which one we're, we're targeting. And at the same time, I'm going to want to turn on a uh, another function uh, when we turn this on to basically make it rotate so it fit, always faces the camera. And I'm probably going to want to find a different font. Uh, this font's fine, but there's much better looking ones out there. And I think I'd want one that's actually outlined uh, in black or at least another a, a contrasting color. But anyway, there we go. We have our mobs. Uh, set up they spawn uh, on under, under our spawn points and we can go ahead and I'm actually going to make this a prefab as well so I'll shrink this down uh, I'm going to come down to resources uh, it's just a generic one you could make another folder called managers if you want uh, but for now I'm just going to create a prefab and I'm going to call this mob generator and I'm just going to drag that onto it so if I ever need it again, it's there. Uh, but anyway, like I said, later on we will be revisiting this. This is actually another good example of uh, a singleton. And I really don't like the way it's set up, but it does work. But anyway, that's it for this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.